Welcome back to my channel everyone. I'm Charles from Charles in Photography. Just under a week ago Nikon released NX Studio and they state that this is a fully fledged editing program. It is free from Nikon so that anyone who uses a Nikon camera can actually edit their raw files, JPEGs or their videos for free. Now understand even though it states it's a free program, which it is, you cannot compare this program with Adobe Lightroom because Adobe Lightroom has so many extra plugins and all that that Adobe Lightroom is great if you really want to delve into editing your photos but according to Nikon they actually state that this program does a fairly good job so today first impressions we'll see how good this program is how easy it is to actually edit our photos and how much detail we can actually get out of a few of the photos that I've selected now all I've done is just open this program up and seeing how I could actually import the photos. And this is my biggest hurdle that I have actually found and a gripe really for me. And that is that you have to have your camera plugged into your computer or you actually have to use an SD card or whatever card your camera takes, your Nikon camera takes, and actually plug it in to a removable drive to actually download the photos onto your computer. If the photos are already on your computer, Nikon NX Studio will not find the photos. They either have to be on your camera or on a removable disk for them to actually be able to be downloaded into this program. Because I'm in the habit of downloading my photos, sorting them out and then importing them into Lightroom. I don't plug my camera into the computer and download the photos from my camera all straight into Lightroom through the SD card. I actually go through my photos first. So first, before we actually delve into NX Studio, I'll just quickly read you the little blurb that Nikon state about NX Studio. NX Studio software offers a fully fledged suite of tools for viewing, processing, and editing your photos and video. It combines the photo and video viewing features of ViewNXi with the photo processing and retouch tools of Capture NXD into a single comprehensive workflow. Not only can it be used to process raw pictures, but its editing tools, including the tone curves, brightness and contrast adjustments, can also be applied to JPEG and TIFF images. Now, TIFF and JPEG images created in your camera. So, now let's take a look at NX Studio. So here we go, when we open up NX Studio, this is what we see. On the left here is your computer. On the right are all the editing tools. They've all been collapsed for the time being. So the first thing you have to do is you have to import the photos, which is done on the top left corner up here. So we click Import, and NX Transfer 2 will open up. You can see that because I've actually already used it once to actually see how to import the photos, it's actually found three photos on my SD card. Now you can see here it says up the top here source. Now if I click search for, see it comes up with cameras and removable disk. If you had your camera plugged in, you would unclick removable disk and it would just look for the camera. If it's just removable disk, then you can unclick camera and it will default to removable disk. Then you choose your primary destination. Just for this tutorial, this is working photos. But if you are going to be using NX Studio to actually edit all your photos, then what you would do is create a subfolder. So you'd create a main folder for your photos. Let's say, call it Trevor's Photos or Cindy's Photos. And then you would create a subfolder every time you import it. And I would state that the best way of doing it is just using the date that you're importing the photos into NX Studio. So that's a very good way of actually seeing when you actually imported those photos into this program. I will just say don't use subfolders for this tutorial. So you can see here it's found our three photos. They're all ticked. Now if you had a hundred photos here but you only wanted to import ten of them because you'd gone through and say, okay, well, you've got five of the same and whatever, then you just tick the ones that you want to import. So I've selected the three of them, 
and we say start transfer so it's going to transfer these three files and you can see if we click up here there's our three images one of Brisbane City at night one of a sunrise at Scarborough Harbour and another daytime shot of Lake Eden so we'll start with the daytime photo from Lake Eden we double click it so it opens up now we can actually see all our panels here on the right we have the editing panel the basic editing and you've seen now that it's actually opened up because we've selected the photo here we have picture controls white balance exposure compensation active delighting and how to adjust the brightness and color then we have levels and curves and all that so first let's go to picture controls in Nikon cameras you can choose vivid landscape portrait and whatever and if you want to know more about picture controls how to set them up in your camera then I actually did a tutorial on that subject which I'll actually link up here now here we can see the record value was vivid so if I want to change it to monochrome portrait or landscape let's choose landscape we have the white balance here we can adjust it so this is has shot we can cool it down a little bit if we want but you can see the image is a bit dark so we'll use exposure compensation and we'll just increase the brightness of our image a little bit there that looks a bit better now you can see we've actually lost a little bit of detail in the clouds here but further down here in the panels we'll actually be able to control that a little bit more first I really want to try to get the colors right so we'll warm it up a little bit more this was late afternoon I'm pretty happy with that okay now we have active delighting if you have a newer Nikon camera you have active delighting in there and if you've used it it will actually show here that active delighting has been used if it hasn't been used like in this image here it says off you can actually turn it on so you can actually have low normal or high let's put it to normal and look at that this is a beauty of shooting in raw because now even though you we hadn't selected active delighting in our raw file because the camera that we used had this feature that you could enable now you could actually use it here and look at how much it's actually done to this image now has the image itself that looks very good so now I just want to go to the adjust the brightness and this is where I can actually use you can see here I've circled highlight protection so I just want to slide this to the right if you're used to Adobe Lightroom if we want to get the highlight details out of the clouds and all that we would actually be using the slider to the left here we're adding it so it's doing the same thing but instead of going to the left we actually have it to the right now we'll increase our shadow detail a little bit the only other thing that I'd like to do to this image here is increase the contrast a little bit first impressions for this photo the slides are fairly good yes it doesn't have as many controls as Lightroom but for this image now you have to understand Nikon is making this program available and it's not really designed for professional photographers for people who are taking hundreds or thousands of photos and who really want to get the very last detail out of their raw files I actually think this program even first impressions on the first photo here would actually be very good for the weekend photographer but you want to shoot in RAW because you want to get a little bit more information than your JPEG but you don't want to spend you know 15 20 minutes on each photo so after you've actually been using this program for a little bit you'd actually be over and done with in just a couple of minutes now a beauty about this program is look here can you see all the little yellow ticks every time we've actually adjusted one of the panels here it actually highlights has a yellow tick so it's very quick to see where you've actually been editing your photo so if you haven't touched the levels and curves they're all grayed out if you haven't adjusted the noise in your image it's grayed out so it's very quick to show you where you've actually edited the image we'll actually export it now to compare it to the raw file so we go up to the top right click export and here the export panel pops up and you can choose whatever you want so if you want to reduce the resolution 
the size of the image so if you're uploading to Facebook then you'd only type in here 2048 that's all you would need leave the quality at 80 percent we click on export so now let's take a look at the raw compared to our edited file so this is our raw file and this is our edited file that looks really good now first impressions I've just walked it through first time I've actually used all these sliders so it took me about five minutes I actually think great let's check our second photo okay so this is the nighttime view of Brisbane you can see here because this was shot with an ultra wide lens the buildings are tilted down so before I actually do any editing to this image let's actually fix this distortion control so we actually can come all the way down the bottom here and we have here perspective control we have vertical and horizontal so I just grab the vertical and I just slide it to the right and you can see the buildings are straightening up that's it perfect this tool is very similar to the distortion tool in Adobe Lightroom now we can actually quickly go up to the exposure compensation this is the way to actually increase or decrease our exposure we actually don't have a slider to increase our exposure per se so this is the only way to do it or we actually just increase the brightness but understand the brightness and the exposure are different so we just increase the exposure compensation a little bit make the image slightly brighter that looks pretty good now let's actually choose our color temperature we'll just bring it down just that little bit look at that that's just beautiful Let's add a little bit of contrast we'll use exposure protection to actually dim down some of these very bright lights that looks very good now let's see with active delighting what happens if we click on normal again not much difference what about high or well, a little bit low I actually quite like low active delighting works in a fashion that it tries to control your highlights and your shadows so if the highlights are really to one side and your shadows are really dark it actually tries to give you middle ground between the two of them now looking at this photo I don't have to do any more to this photo there's no need to spend any more time on it let's export it now panel back up here export so again this is the raw file but looking at this JPEG actually done a very good job at editing this photo so another tick for this program the first time I'm using this program feel that after a couple of goes of editing actually get your workflow patted down fairly well so my first impressions I actually feel that next studio is actually a very good program especially has a free program because it lets you edit your raw files from your Nikon camera and because it comes from Nikon it can read all the exif data so it's free and you can get all the information from your raw files or your JPEG files for that matter and I feel that after a couple of times that you've been using this program you'll actually get quite good workflow happening this is the first time I was using it so trying to remember where all the panels were was a little bit difficult but I'm back in there like day or every few days you'll actually get a handle on where the panels are that you have to to use Did I use this program personally well on holidays I would this time I traveled to Thailand I would definitely be downloading it and using it on my laptop because I only edit my raw files on my home office here but when I'm on holidays normally I would only just share the JPEG photos so if I'm at a nice spot like a nice waterfall or if I'm in a nice sunset I could actually do a very quick edit and just share where I was that day when I come home then I could actually just put those same files back into Lightroom and put it into my portfolio so I'd recommend this for the weekend photographer definitely thumbs up when I get time in the next couple of weeks I'll go through and spend a bit more time with it and maybe give an update if you've gotten value from this video give me a thumbs up I'd appreciate if you subscribe to my channel and I'll see you next time